ही community viewers, the topic of today's video is factors influencing the vibrational frequency or wave number. So in this video, I am going to explain the factors that affect the vibrational frequency or that affect the wave number. So this topic is related to the IR spectroscopy, the vibrational spectroscopy. Okay. So now moving on towards the factors that affect the wave number. So as you can see here that these are some factors that affect the wave number, the bond order, the resonance and inductive effect, the hydrogen bonding, Fermi resonance and the bond angles. Okay, so these are the five effects that these are the five factors that affect the wave number. So the first effect is the bond order. So as you can see here that bond order, the bond order means the number of bond forms between the two atoms. Okay, bond order is actually the number of bonds that are formed between the two atoms. So take the example, first example here that there is carbon carbon single bond and since this is a single bond so the wave number is very much lower okay so if there is an increase in the number of bonds as you can see here that here is a double bond so the wave number is increased and moving on further if i have c triple bond c then in that case i have 2150 means the wave number has increased further so i can say that increase in the bond order okay increase in the bond order causes an increase in the vibrational frequency causes an increase in the uh, wave number or the vibrational frequency moving on towards the inductive effect the inductive effect is actually the pulling of the electrons okay so this is the pulling of electrons towards itself z is just pulling the electron towards itself and it is not breaking the c double bond o okay it is not breaking the pi bond whereas in case of resonance the pi bond is broken between c double bond o and this pi bond is being formed between c and z okay so this is the difference between the resonance and the inductive effect in inductive effect there is only a pulling of electrons and there is no breakage of c double bond o okay Okay, so as you can see here that in case of this structure, in case of this structure, the double bond always retains its position, the double bond always retains its place, so there is always a bond order of 2, whereas in this case, the double bond breaks, okay, this is not a complete double bond, this is, I, I can say that this is a partial double bond, because double bond always, uh, because double bond does not always remain between C double bond O, okay, so now if I compare the wave number, if I compare the vibrational frequency of carbonyl group, of, of this carbonyl group with this carbonyl group, okay, if I compare the vibrational frequency of this carbonyl group with this carbonyl group, the vibration frequency of this carbonyl group will be lesser as compared to this carbonyl group. Why it would be lesser? Because this carbonyl group does not always retain its double bond, whereas this carbonyl group always retain its double bond. Okay, so now moving on. As you can see here that pentanone, take an example of pentanone, this pentanone always retain its C double bond O because there is no resonance, okay? Whereas if I compare this with this structure, as you can see here that there will be resonance and the pi bond of this carbonyl group will shift here, okay? The pi bond will shift here and what happens that this carbonyl group does not always remain a double bond, so bond order is decreased, okay? So in this case, I can say that this pentanone has more wave number, this pentanone has more vibration frequency as compared to the cyclohexanone because cyclohexanone does not always remain a double bond because the carbonyl group in the cyclohexanone does not always remain a double bond which causes a decrease in the vibration frequency of cyclohexanone which causes a decrease in the wave number of cyclohexanone okay so now moving on towards the next example as you can see here in amide as you can see here amide the amide here nh2 donates the electron pair okay this nh2 this and the nitrogen donates the electron pair and breaks the pi bond of c double bond o okay so there is a resonance between amide and there is a resonance between nitrogen and carbonyl group so hey, this is the resonance uh, structure of um, of an amide okay whereas if if I talk about this ketone, there is no resonance in ketone, okay? If I talk about the ketone, there is no resonance in ketone, there is no extra electron pair that can be donated to get a resonance structure. So in the case of uh, a ketone, there will be no resonance structure, whereas in case of an amide, there will be resonance, okay? So what happens? The resonance decreases the double bond character. This resonance decreases the double bond character of carbonyl, whereas the double bond character of carbonyl in case of the ketone is not decreased. Okay, whereas in case of ketone, the double bond always retains its position, whereas in case of amide, the double bond character is decreased. So since in case of amide, the double bond character is decreased, so I can say that the wave number, that the higher frequency of the amide is less than the ketone. So now moving on towards the next example, as you can see here that this here is an ether and this here is an alcohol, okay? So now compare the wave number of both of these two. As you can see here that in case there, uh, in case of an alcohol, there is always a C single bond O and again in case of the ether, there is always a C single bond O. So the vibrational frequency is always 1050 and 1050, okay? So, but if I talk about uh, uh, carboxylic acid, consider the carboxylic acid, the consider a CO bond 
in case of a carboxylic acid this co bond consider this co bond in case of carboxylic acid this co bond is not always a single bond it becomes a double bond it becomes a double bond due to the resonance structure so the wave number is increased okay so i can say that the wave number in case of carboxylic acid is larger is uh, due to the effect of resonance okay so if i talk about an ester here okay the the esters have both c single bond o and a partial c double bond o okay so let me just explain it that due to the resonance this c single bond o becomes a c double bond o so i can say that this c double bond o is a partial c double bond o due to resonance whereas i have i i also have another c single bond o okay this c single bond o is a pure sigma bond whereas this other c double bond o is a partial double bond or and it has a partial p character it is a partial uh, double bond okay so i can say that uh, the esters show the wave number at both ranges at both ends at 1050 and 12 1250 why because the esters have a c single bond o and they also have a partial double bond character so let me just explain it clearly that in case of partial double bond in case of a partial double bond we had the wave number of 1250 so we have here a partial double bond so that's why we can have we can expect a 1250 wave number and similarly we ha also have a c single bond o here so since c single bond o was showing a 1050 so i can say that my ester can also show so show a 1050 wave number okay so now moving on towards the next example consider this benzamide and phenyl acetate okay in benzamide the nitrogen is less electronegative as compared to oxygen the nitrogen here is less electronegative as compared to this oxygen here so less electronegative means that it can donate its electron easily so nitrogen can donate the electrons easily since this nitrogen can donate the electrons easily so it can easily break the c double bond oh okay so the wave number of carbonyl group is decrease as if i talk about the phenyl acetate in case of phenyl acetate we have an oxygen and oxygen is actually more electronegative than oxygen and more electronegative mean that a, the donation of the electron becomes difficult by oxygen since the donation of the electron becomes difficult by oxygen so there will be very much lower disturbance in the double bond character of c double bond o so this causes an increase in the wave number of the phenyl acetate whereas the benzamide will have a lower wave number let me just repeat it again that nitrogen is easily donating the electron so it is causing a disturbance in c double bond o so its double bond character is reduced okay so that will have a lower wave number whereas if i talk about oxygen oxygen is donating uh, oxygen cannot donate its electron easily because oxygen is more electronegative so that causes a less disturbance in c double bond o character so that's why we have a stronger uh, vibration frequency of 1730 uh, per centimeter okay so now moving on towards the next example and now compare the structure of this first with this third as you can see here that nitrogen this nitrogen is less electronegative as compared to oxygen oxygen is more electronegative so nitrogen can easily donate its electron to disturb this carbonyl bond okay to disturb this carbonyl double bond means that this nitrogen this nitrogen can easily disturb this carbonyl double bond and causes a decrease in the double bond character of the carbonyl whereas if i talk about this oxygen this oxygen atom uh, cannot donate its electron easily and will cause a lesser disturbance in c double bond o's double bond character okay there will be a less disturbance in c double bond o character in case of oxygen here okay so i can say that uh, the there will be an increase in the vibrational frequency of this molecule and there will be a decreased vibrational frequency of this molecule okay so now compare the other two now if i talk about compound number 2 and compound number 4 in compound number 2 and compound number 4 the inductive effect dominates over the resonance effect so in compound number 2 and compound number 4 there will be no resonance there will only be the inductive effect okay so as you can see here in compound number 2 the no2 is pulling the electron towards itself the electron the no2 is actually the electron withdrawing group okay so it is pulling the electron towards itself uh, making the vibration frequency to appear at 1700 per centimeter okay now if i talk about the compound number 4 in case of compound number 4 again the inductive effect is dominating and as you can see here that we get a higher wave number at 1770 okay so now if i compare compound number 1 and compound number 2 as you have you see here that in compound number 1 there will be less double bond character due to this electron donation okay whereas if i compare uh, if i talk about this compound number 2 there will be Uh, the electron withdrawing effect of no2 group and the electron withdrawing effect of no2 group cannot 
cause much decrease in the C double bond O character. So that's why in case of NO2, we have a wave number at a higher range. Okay. Similarly, if I talk about uh, this here, if I talk about compound number 3 here, compound number 3, we have an oxygen that is donating an electron and causing a decrease in the C double bond O character. Okay. So we have a lower wave number and again uh, in case of, in last case, we again have an inductive effect dominating over the resonance effect that is causing the wave number to appear at 1770 per centimeter okay so now moving on towards the third factor the third factor is actually the hydrogen bonding so how can hydrogen bonding affect the wave number first of all the presence of hydrogen bonding changes the position and shape of an infrared absorption band okay the presence of hydrogen bonding the presence of hydrogen bonding changes the position and shape of an infrared absorption band okay and the frequency of both stretching as well as bending vibration are changed because of hydrogen bonding so because of hydrogen bonding the uh, stretching and bending frequency both of them changes so why both of them changes the x at stretching bands move to lower frequency usually with increased instance intensity and band widening so now consider an example like if i have a molecule x h okay this uh, this h will form a hydrogen bond with another x and this x is attached to another h okay and again this x has form a hydrogen bond with an h okay and this h is further attached to an x okay so now consider this example here as you can see here that this x h okay this x h is a single molecule and in this molecule this hydrogen is being attracted by this x okay so i can say the stretching becomes easier because when this h will move further away from this x what happens this uh, this x will help it this x will help this hydrogen to move it away uh, from this x okay similarly if i talk about the other hydrogen if i talk about this x okay when this x is stretching when this x is moving away from its hydrogen then this x actually is being attracted by this hydrogen okay so the stretching becomes easier since the stretching becomes easier in case of a hydrogen bonding so i can say that the frequency is lowered okay that the frequency is lowered but if i talk about xh bending vibration if i talk about the bending vibration in the in case of bending vibration there will be higher frequency there will be higher frequency why there will be higher frequency because due to the hydrogen bonding the bending becomes very very much difficult so that's why uh, we will need more energy so i can say that in case of bending vibrations we will require a higher frequency so its wave number shifts to a higher range okay so now the extent of hydrogen bonding depends upon the concentration of a solution okay increasing the concentration of our uh, solution increases the amount of hydrogen bonding it is the extent of hydrogen bonding so increasing the hydrogen bonding causes the change in the position and the shape of the absorption band okay because the position and the shape of the absorption band depends upon the concentration of the solution and increasing the concentration of a solution causes an increase in the hydrogen bonding okay so the more concentrated solution the more likely for uh, oh containing molecules to form intermolecular hydrogen bonds so it is easier to stretch the oh bond as i've just told you earlier that it is easier to stretch the oh bond because the hydrogen is attracted to the oxygen of the neighboring molecule okay so now moving on as you can see here that if i have a concentrated solution if i have a concentrated solution then there will be more hydrogen bonding and more hydrogen bonding means that there will be uh there will be an easiness of vibration and easiness of vibration causes a decrease in the wave number okay and whereas if i talk about uh, a dilute solution in case of dilute solution the wave number will be larger why the wave number will be larger because the vibrations in case of the dilute solution becomes difficult because there are no other atoms that can cause an ease in the stretching vibration of the dilute solution whereas in case of a concentrated solution there are other molecules that can cause an ease in the stretching vibration of the um, of the molecule okay so now moving on towards next the fermi resonance in case of fermi resonance if i have a molecule that has vibrational modes at two that have two different vibrational modes at a same energy level okay if i have a molecule that has two different vibrational modes at a same energy level then perturbation occurs means then disturbance occurs and one of them is lowered in frequency whereas other uh, and whereas the frequency of the other one is increased let me just explain it with an example okay just take an example of carbon dioxide as you can see here that carbon dioxide shows two type of vibrations first of all it shows stretching and it also shows bending vibration okay so 
as you can see here that stretching occurs at 1340 per centimeter the fundamental uh, frequency of stretching is 1340 per centimeter whereas if i talk about the first overtune of bending the first overtune of bending occurs at 1334 per centimeter okay so the fundamental vibration the fundamental stretching occurs at 1340 per centimeter whereas the first overtune of the bending occurs at 1334 okay and this 667 is actually the fundamental uh, absorption frequency the fundamental frequency of bending vibration okay so the fundamental frequency of bending vibration is 667 whereas if i multiply it with 2 then there is the first overtone frequency the first overtone frequency of carbon dioxide occurs at 1334 okay so now as you can see here that 1334 and 1340 are very much comparable energies so in that case the fermi resonance occurs and it can cause uh, the two bands it can cause appearance of the two bands of different frequency okay uh, a band of frequency at 1285 and the other band of frequency at 1385 okay so this is the perturbation that i was just talking about so moving on towards the next point the next point and the last point is the bond angles so an increase in the bond angle causes a increase in the wave number so as you can see here that in this case the bond angle is less so we have a lesser wave number whereas in this case the bond uh, the bond angle is greater so we have a greater wave number and similarly moving on towards this last this last has a much greater bond angle so causing a much greater wave number okay so that was all uh, the five factors that affect the vibrational frequency the five factors that affect wave number in case of ir spectroscopy so inshallah see you in the next video do not forget to like the video and subscribe the channel so if you have any question you can ask in the comments